Now, the story is that the goddess Nut, wife of Ra, was beloved by another cave, another triangle. Ra discovers their relationship and becomes extremely angry, becomes so angry that he declares that his wife may not have a child in any month of any year. The god Thoth, usually associated with writing, also loves her and gambles at tables with another named Selim. And he wins for the queen nut a tiny part of each day of the year, which adds up to five days. Okay. Now, the Egyptian, interestingly enough, the Egyptian calendar was divided into 12 months of 30 days each, equaling 360 days. And the extra five days adds up to 365 days. They had a very exacting calendar. The calendar we use today is really the Egyptian calendar. It's not the Gregorian calendar. <laughs> you look at your watch, you're telling African time. <laughs> This calendar is as exacting as the one we use today. It is the one we use today with some slight modifications and appears to have been in usage at least 3246 BCE, before Christ, and probably a lot earlier than that. There are various dates. Cheikh Anton Diop gives an even earlier date. But it boggles the mind that this was in exacting use. People had this exacting measurements of the stars and the planets that far back. Now, supposedly on these five days of Newt, Osiris was brought forth. Supposedly also, other figures of the royal line were brought forth in the remaining four days. Horus, or Horu, the son of Isis and Osiris, came forth on day two. Set, or Seth, Typhon, who becomes later on associated with the devil, comes forth in day three. Set becomes Satan, Satan model for the for the evil one also on uh, day four Isis wife of Osiris is supposed to have come forth and she is the archetype of the black Madonna the black Madonna cult and religion that is worshipped throughout the world there are uh, she was there are shrines to uh, Isis in ancient Russia the uh, Polish solidarity movement has a black Madonna as the head of their symbol. They have absolutely no idea why, <laughs> but they do. Um, and uh, she was even worshipped as far as Britain and uh, France. Uh, Paris was originally the site of, site of uh, a temple to uh, Isis, per Isis, Paris. Uh, also the wife, the sister, I should say, of Isis, Nephesis, I think that's how you pronounce it, came forth on day five. So there's a family unconscious <coughs> process here. There's a cosmic process, but there's also a very intimate familial process going on. In other words, I've tried to elucidate what the unconscious dynamics of families are, particularly family relationships as expressed through psychosomatic uh, symptoms and also parapsychological phenomena, because both of them profoundly affect um, a psychic process and also physical processes in the body. But this family unconscious process is really at the root of this mythic drama. Now, at the moment of Osiris' birth, legend has it that a great voice proclaimed out that the Lord of creation has incarnated in the world. I get the symbolism of a God-man, a God prior to being man, who freely, uh, uh, not renounces, but contracts, contracting light again, contracts his or her divinity and becomes human i.e. the word made flesh. This idea that later appears in Christianity, particularly in the Judaic Christianity, the messianic tradition, has its root here. In time, Osiris becomes king or pharaoh, civilizes his devotees, and then in a messianic movement, goes out to civilize other nations. His wife Isis rules the kingdom in his stead and does well. Upon his return, Seth or Satan, who becomes the model again for Satan, plots with 72 comrades and the queen of Ethiopia, Aso, ASO, to betray and murder Osiris, who apparently seems to be his father. So we have an Oedipal drama here. Legend says that the secret plotters, by ruse, get Osiris' exact measurements, make a <coughs> chest of his size, and then in a banquet, get Osiris to lay inside of the chest. 
As soon as Osiris gets inside of the chest, Set closes it very quickly and locks him in it. The chest is then taken to the Nile River, put up on the Nile River, and floated out to sea. This happened on the 17th day of the month of Hathor, when Osiris was either 28 years old or in the 28th year of his reign. Now, Queen Isis, who was away in the, island, away in the land of Koptos, Coptic, Koptos, at this time eventually learns of this tragic turn of events, goes into a deep grief, and then sets out in search of the body of Osiris. Now, on her journey in search of Osiris' body, <laughs> Isis learns that Osiris has sexually united with her sister while well, she's been gone. A little family thing there. <laughs> um, and that they have a child, and the child's name is Anubis, the dog-headed god. Anubis, as a child, is taken out and supposedly exposed to the elements so that he would die. But, of course, he doesn't die. Okay. Isis and Anubis, then, and other dogs, search out and search for Osiris' body, trace the chest carrying Osiris' body to the sea, to the ancient city of Byblos, where it has gently been laid by the ways in the uh, branches of the tamarisk tree. If you remember, uh, Byblos is where the word Bible comes from. Biblios was a city with a lot of religious ferment, and that's where the Bible has its origins, where it was first, part of it was first compiled. The branches of the tamarisk tree grew into a, grow into a large and magnificent tree, enclosing the chest and the body of Osiris inside. The king of this land, admiring this chest, has it cut down and make, made it to a pillar for one of his houses, the roof of one of his houses. Learning of this, now people learn this, we don't know, but <coughs> learning of this, Isis, disguised as a nurse, gains admittance into the king's house. But instead of nursing the king's son, supposedly only gives him her, his, her finger to suck every night and slowly throws parts of his body into the fire to have it consumed. In this way, takes away his immortality. Okay? One night, the queen of this kingdom suddenly discovers this and confronts Isis. Isis then reveals who she really is, the queen, in search of her husband. The other queen is moved by this and gives Isis the pillar and the chest inside of it with Osiris' body. Isis opens it up, looks at Osiris' body, is thrown into another grief, and the wail is so loud, legend has it, that it destroys a sleeping child of the king. Isis brings the chest back by sea to Egypt, hides it, and then sets out to locate her son Horus, or Horu. However, Seth, the evil one, while hunting by moonlight, discovers the chest and Osiris' body, cuts it up into 14 pieces, and then scatters it throughout Egypt. Isis hears of this new travesty, sets down the Nile in search of the 14 fragments of Osiris, and wherever she locates a fragment of the body of Osiris, establishes a temple. And from that temple, a city's life grows up. So you see how Osiris' body brings new life to the land. His head is supposedly buried at Abydos, his ear at Sais, dorsal spine at Mendes, left hand on the island of Bigdad near Thale, and so on and so forth. So Isis, I mean rather, Osiris is reborn throughout Egypt. Now by this time, Horus, child of Isis and Osiris, has grown up. Horus sets out to avenge his father's death and, be and betrayal by Seth. So another huge, intense family argument. A battle ensues, eventually Seth loses. Horus conquers Seth, i.e. light conquering darkness. The angels of light went over the angels of darkness. Can you see the biblical story prefigured here? Mm -hmm. Seth is taken prisoner, but the compassionate queen, his mother again, frees her son. Horus comes back, finds out about this, flies into a rage, rips her crown off, but again, her secret admirer, Thoth, gives her a helmet shaped like a crown. So that you often see that Egyptian crown with, uh, with the cow horns. Uh, Cow, the cow's head of Hathor. Again, there are two other battles are fought. Horus, or Horu, the messenger of light, is again victorious over the dark, satanic forces of Seth. Light is established in the world by Horu, 
The resurrection and transformation is spread everywhere.